What's up, YouTube? It is your boy, JB, and I am here with the review for Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. This is season one, episode number nine, I believe it is. And the episode was titled Hip Hop and Heartbreak. So you guys, um, before we get into this video, I just wanna, you know, see how everyone is out, you know, doing out there. Are you guys good? Today was a crazy day. You know, <clears throat> this is very reminiscent to me of 9-11. Like I remember what that day felt like and that is what today has felt like to me. You know, it was really nice to watch the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City and escape from reality, you know, from the actual reality of what we're living in right now. And, you know, um, we'll get through this, you guys. We got January 20th is right around the corner. Two weeks from now, he will be gone and the world can start to heal from the madness that is of you know who, he who shall not be named on his channel. Um, you know, I just could have never expected that something like this would have taken place. Like, I just don't understand it. Um, so we'll discuss this later. Um, I'm going to be doing the week's hottest topics this week. I'm actually going to try, I think I'm going to record it tomorrow, which is Thursday, and upload it on Friday for you guys. So we'll talk about it a little bit more there, but let's go ahead and just talk about the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City, you guys. All right, you guys. So this episode, um, let's start off with Mary. So Mary, in this episode, we see her and she's calling Robert and Robert is off checking on one of the, their properties that they have that, you know, she inherited from her grandmother. Now, the producers asked Mary, how many properties does she, you know, did her grandmother leave her? And Mary said that, you know, she doesn't really know. And then, you know, she started naming off where they have them at. They have the Salt Lake City. They have one in, I know they have one in Florida. They have one in um, Vegas. They had two somewhere else. I think it was a total of maybe five houses. I think that's what I saw. Um, so then Mary is talking to Robert about not being invited to this party that Jen is having. And we're going to discuss Jen's party in just a little bit. And Mary just wants to know, like, what is it, you know, what is it about, you know, her that Jen just doesn't get along with. And in this episode, I finally kind of pieced together what I think it is. And if you team Jen, um, this might not be the video for you because I don't, I, <clears throat> I've said it plenty of times. I don't like Jen. There's nothing that Jen can do that can make me like her. She is unlikable. But for me, the issue that I think Jen has, it is marriage. I think she has an issue with Mary's marriage, but it's not the issue that you would think it is. The fact that Mary married her step grandfather. I don't think that's the issue. The issue I think is that, you know, Mary is in her marriage with her step, it, we're gonna stop saying, I'm gonna stop saying that for right now. I'm actually gonna stop saying that, period. Mary is married. And I think that Jen, just because of who Mary is married to, she would expect there to be probably no love, no, no nothing there. <clears throat> Maybe just a marriage of convenience or a marriage for business. <clears throat> Excuse me, y'all. I, and I think the issue is insecurity on Jen's behalf. And you guys might be like, well, what would you might be saying? Why would Jen be insecure of Mary? Look at Jen's marriage. Sharif is never around. Sharif is always off working. So Jen tells Sharif is never around. But Mary's husband is very present. And I think that is what Jen's issue is, because if you notice, Jen picks apart other people's marriages, i.e. Mary and i.e. Um, Meredith, which we'll talk about that in a little bit. She picks apart their marriages, but she can never hold a mirror up to her face and, you know, talk about, she talks about her marriage, but she makes it seem like her marriage is so good and this and that. So Jen is insecure about that. So then, you know, she's, um, we, we later saw Mary. I don't know what the fuck Mary had on that, that blouse, them leather pleather pants and those boots. Didn't really understand it, but hey, it was, it was for her, but it wasn't for me. 
So she's showing Whitney around the house. And I was with Whitney when they got to her room. I'm like, that looks like someone is hoarding. Because, I mean, a lot of stuff in there. So Mary wants to talk to Whitney about the girls because she says that the girls all feel like the way that Jen treats her is wrong, but they're too afraid to stand up for, you know, stand up for Mary. I will agree with Mary on that one because even when Mary had her Met Gala, you know, thing, the women came at Mary when Jen was in the wrong. Jen was the one that started all this shit. Don't look at me like that, Mary. Like, it was all Jen, but y'all came at Mary. Mary didn't do, I mean, did Mary interrupt her? Yes, but Mary was not in the wrong. It was Jen. So, yes, I do see it. The women defend Jen over Mary, and I don't agree with that. Despite how, I mean, I don't care how people might feel about Mary. Y'all have to be able to say that Jen is wrong. Y'all got to be able to call her out on that. I'm not here for that stand shit because I don't stand anybody that I don't. I don't stand anybody. I really don't. But, yeah, that's it for Mary. Let's move on. I didn't expect that to be that long. All right, you guys. Next, let's talk about Heather. So, it wasn't much in this episode with Heather. So, we saw Heather and we finally met her ex-husband. Now, they showed a, a flashback photo of her ex-husband Time has not been good for that man. I mean, he looks bad. Just keeping it real with you, he looks really bad. Not that bad, but he doesn't, I mean, he, I mean, time is really aging him. So he's over there for his Valentine's Day. And, you know, um, they're with their girls. Now, like I said, it wasn't much in this scene with her, but the bulk of the information came from her interview with the producers because she was talking about, you know, their relationship. You know, he was rich. And I think that's really all she saw was he was a man. He was rich. Why not marry him? But, I mean, did you do you love him? That should be the thing that you look for in a mate. Can I see myself with this person for the rest of my life? If not, <clears throat> don't marry them. I don't care how much money they got. So she was talking about the fact that they went to see Scary Movie 3, I think she said, when, um, wait a minute, Scary Movie 3, the glory hole scene. There was a glory hole scene in Scary Movie 3, and as many times as I saw that movie, Scary Movie 3, Scary Movie 3, Scary Movie 3, I'm trying to remember scenes out of Scary Movie 3. All I can think of is scary movie, the first scary movie, when Sean Wayne's character was in a bathroom. And that's the only scene that I can think of is that scene when he was in the bathroom and there was a glory hole there and the person kept sticking it, <laughs> kept sticking it through the glory hole. And that fool put his ear up to it and the, and the dick came through his ear. Huh. That's the only thing... I can't remember, oh, I do remember Scary Movie 3. That's the one where Brenda died, right? That's the one with the ring, when Brenda and the girl from the ring fought each other, when, when that bitch was messing up the floor. You know, the world goes crazy for one whitey down the hole. That's Scary Movie 3, right? Yes, when she was talking about churning the butter, Okay, when that's the one where Brenda died. <laughs> but still, there was a glory hole scene in that one? I don't remember it. But yeah, neither, that's neither here nor there. But he got, mad, <laughs> he got mad at her about the glory hole scene and left. Like, are you serious? And then she told us the reason that they got the divorce is because of one of their kids' baptism. He got mad because she wouldn't change the time to accommodate his sister. I'm like, oh my God interesting <laughs> he left and didn't come back because of that that is ridiculous let's move on you guys <clears throat> all right you guys most of the women in this episode didn't have a lot in their scenes so i don't know how i'm gonna stretch it out but next up is meredith so we see meredith i'm, I'm just gonna be honest with you guys brooks is annoying to me 
<laughs> Brooks is really, really, really annoying. It's the entitlement that just it's 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 the entitlement from him that that just gets to me. God. So at this point, Meredith and Seth are in a great you know, so they say they're in a great spot. And you know, I honestly believe Meredith. Meredith did tweet something a few weeks ago about, you know, her and Seth's marriage. I forgot what it was. I think it was that week that Jen was having that conversation with Whitney and she was just talking about her marriage, you know. She and Seth have had their ups and downs and, you know, they they do find their way back to each other. And I still just I still feel some type of way about Jen going around spreading her business. Like, if that's your homegirl, if that's your friend, and you know that, you know, if she if you know that she and Seth are working on their marriage, don't be on camera spreading her, her business saying, even if it was true, you don't know what the what goes on in the confines of their marriage. You don't know if, you know, they separated and it was okay for them to see other people and Seth was okay with that. You don't know what the ins and outs of that relationship is. So for you to go back and spread that business to Heather, to uh, who else? Whitney was just low on her part. And you know, oh God, Brooks, what are you talking about? If you guys have sex, just know that I'm beneath you in the bottom bedroom. Okay, Brooks, shut the fuck up. Let's move on. All right, you guys, let's talk about Lisa real quick. Wasn't much with Lisa either in this episode. Um, we see Lisa and her sons. I will say this was a refreshing side of Lisa to see just a little bit her interacting with her sons and not being about business, 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 which there's nothing wrong with being a business person and there's nothing wrong with being about your business. You know, um, it's just like, okay, girl, you're doing the most, like, are you spending time with your kids? Yes, it's cool to have the money. It's cool to not want for anything, but kids don't really care about monetary things. Kids care about spending time with their parents. So that's why I'm glad in this episode, she and John spent time with their sons. Um, now I will say though, there was one scene in this when she was talking about the fact that she and John had talked to their sons about, you know, having a business. So I guess they're gonna do like, you know, men's cologne and men's fragrances and stuff like that. I do respect that. Teach the kids the value of a dollar. I do appre I do like that. Cause that's you know, that's how kids, you know, appreciate the things that they have. If if you actually teach kids to appreciate the value of a dollar, it goes a long way. And it, it starts to instill, you know, work ethic in them. So I do applaud her at a, and for that part. And then, you know, they fed the penguins, and I thought that was really cute, especially when the little penguins came running, and I'm like, oh, that is so cute. Like, I, I want to go feed penguins now. Would I? Maybe. Maybe not. Don't know. Would I feed penguins? Yeah, they look so cute, but I would want to take them home with me because they were so cute. Could you keep a penguin as a pet? But I'm pretty sure they had to be in a cold climate, huh? Or near water. Aw, I would really love a penguin. All right, let's move on, you guys. I was trying to stretch that out if you guys didn't figure it out. <laughs> All right, you guys, next, let's talk about Whitney. So Whitney, she went over to her friend, her name is Sarah, and I was like, I didn't recognize her until they showed that that flashback of her from what was it the first was it the first or the second episode when they had um, you know that party from that Jen allegedly threw for Meredith. Happy birthday to you. It's not my birthday. <laughs> so that was Sarah. She looked a lot. She looked a lot different. Um. So. Sarah is talking, so they're talking to each other, and, you know, Whitney is talking about Justin's family. Now, that was weird when she was talking about his family. The fact that it took them years to put their wedding photo in the house because they still had 
Justin's photo with his ex-wife in the house. <laughs> and not only that, you know, when Justin and so they had the wife, they had the ex-wife in Justin's photo in the house. Then when he and Whitney, you know, they finally accepted Whitney, I guess, they still kept the photo of him and his ex-wife along with Whitney and Justin's wedding photo. And then they kept, they got a photo of Justin's ex-wife with her new husband. I'm like, oh my God, how weird is that? Justin, I mean, come on, Justin. Like you didn't say, mom, dad, get rid of that photo because I'm not married to her anymore and get rid of that photo because she's not in the family anymore. But you know what I get? But even still, just because Justin and that one might have kids, that is that is weird as the fuck. I mean, I guess it's, I guess it's cool that y'all can still consider her a daughter, but that's still hella weird to me. So Whitney talks to Sarah about the fact that, you know, when it comes down to this group of ladies, and more specifically, Jen Shaw, you know, she feels, she said, you know, Mary told her that some of the girls are afraid of her and, you know, it's a divine and it's tension in a group because, and actually the divine and tension in a group is not because of Mary. It's nothing to deal with Mary. It's all on Jen. I even tweeted to Andy tonight, like, if season two, if we get renewed for a season two for Salt Lake City, don't renew Jen's contract. Like, please don't renew her contract. I can't deal with another season of Jen because I really, honestly, you guys, I enjoy Salt Lake City. I enjoy reviewing Salt Lake City because it's, it's, it's a breath of fresh air. It's new. I enjoy it. But I don't enjoy talking about Jen. I really, truly don't enjoy it. And I'm saying it here right now. So if Salt Lake City gets renewed for a season two, which I'm hoping it does, and if Jen returns for a season two, I'm still going to review the show, you guys. But what I will do is any scene with Jen, anything with Jen in it, I won't discuss it. I promise you that. Like I will, you will be like, damn, JB. Like you know, Jen is part of the show. In my world, she won't be. Like I will fast forward through her scenes. If she has a party, that's gonna be a short ass review because we're not gonna discuss it. We will not discuss anything Jen related if she returns for a season two. So Sarah just tells, you know, um, Whitney that she needs to talk to, his, you know, Jen. And, you know, Sarah Whitney was like, okay, well, shit, you know, Sharifa, she's having a surprise party for Sharif. And whenever Sharifa's around, she's in a good mood. So we'll not, we'll do it there. Let's move over to Jen, you guys, unfortunately. All right, you guys. So let's discuss Jen. First of all. Whoever did her nose job, they should be fired. Whoever did her face should be fired as well. Her face is, a, oh, that is a face only a mother could love because her face, besides the bleaching of her skin, her face is fucked up. Jen looks like the mask. She looks like the mask. She actually, look, actually you know what? She looks like that thing from Saw. The the look the look the little thing with the red shit in its face, that's what she looks like. I don't know what that thing's name is because I, I never saw, I never watched Saw, but she looks like that thing from Saw. She looks like that damn creature from Saw. God, I mean, she should never get plastic surgery ever again because Jen looks a mess. So like I said. I don't even know if I said that because I was talking about her face. But she's planning a surprise party for Sharif. So it's going to be a hip-hop party and it's going to be a golfing party at the same time. I didn't draw, I mean, I didn't really draw the, compar you know, the, the parallels at the time, but whatever. So she has her assistants planning this party. So then she called Whitney up and she's inviting Whitney to the party. And Whitney was like, well, is Marion invited to the party? And Jen said no, that Mary is not invited to the party. And Jen says that she's not fake. And I'm like, you a motherfucking lie. You are as fake as they come. From your outwardly appearance to the inside. You're fake all the way around. Like on that ship that you are fake. Because for talking about for her to say she's not fake, what do you call talking about Meredith's business behind her back? If that ain't fake, 
I don't know what the fuck is. You talking about this woman's business behind her back, but then you in her face, keep, you know, sniggling and giggling, you know, teeing, ha ha with her, you know, kikiing with the woman. But like I said, you behind her back talking shit about her. That is the definition of fake two face. Whatever the fuck you want to call it, Jen, you are fake on that shit. You know, um, I was just watching Watch What Happens Live. Andy had um, Emily from Real Housewives of Orange County and Whitney, ooh, not Whitney, Mary from Salt Lake City. I know that, you know, Orange County's reunion has already, you know, they've already filmed their reunion. And see, I don't know when Andy recorded this episode. I'm pretty positive this episode was either recorded last week or the week before. I don't know exactly when this episode was recorded, but it was recorded within the last two weeks. I'm pretty positive. He told, um, he was talking to, to Mary about the fact that their reunion was filming that week. So I don't know if, I don't know if he was saying it that and saying it, you know, to, to the effect that it was filming this week or if, or if it was literally whenever they recorded that episode, but Nonetheless, their reunion is coming up soon, and I hope that the ladies eat Jen alive because she got a lot of shit to answer for at the reunion. She has a lot of shit to answer for. She has the shit to answer for with Mary. She got the answer for the shit with Meredith. Like, I hope these women eat her alive. I really do. I really truly do. And I hope Andy tells her to leave that fucking microphone at home. See, the thing about Jen is, she wants that microphone because Jen don't know how to read. Jen can talk shit in her interviews with the producers, but in her scenes, she ain't got it. So she ain't quick with it on she ain't quick with it on on you know off the top of the dome. She's not that type of girl. So I hope that the women eat her alive. I really, really do. I hope they do. So you ladies, put your foot on her neck the way that Karen had her foot attached to Giselle's neck at the Real Housewives of Potomac reunion. Listen to me and listen to me good because that's what we, the fans, want. Now, the Gen fans are probably going to be upset if it happens, but I'm not a Gen fan. I don't give a fuck. Go in on her. Read her. Up, down, backwards, forwards. Read that ass. So, I will say one thing nice about Jen in this review. The party that she had for Sharif, it actually really did look fun. Now she had me, she had me fucked up when she was telling her stylist, you know, to do her up like Beyonce. I'm like, you could never be anything near Beyonce on your worst day. So then she showed up in her formation outfit. I'm like, oh, Beyonce should sue you for cheapening her outfit because it looks so cheap and it just looks so cheap on you with your fan, your pancake flat ass and. Yeah, I'm a Beyonce fan, so I took offense to that. I don't give a damn. If you didn't take it, if if you love Jen again, that's your girl. Beyonce's my girl. And I'ma stand up for my girl. Because Beyonce would never be anything like a Jen Shaw. Just keeping it real. So they have a little dance breakdown and why does uh, I know Jen is Tongan and Hawaiian, but she's saying she's a brown girl with rhythm. She you know, she's a brown girl with rhythm. Whitney was dancing better than you, my love. And I want you to stop saying that you're a brown girl because if you were such a brown girl, why is your face bleached looking like Casper the friendly fucking ghost? If you want to be proud of being a brown girl, don't stop. You should have you should have never bleached your skin. But whatever. So Heather and Whitney were going to go talk to Jen about what Mary told them about Meredith and um and Lisa. <laughs> Whitney couldn't get it out. So Heather finally eventually just told her and Jen flipped the fuck out. I'm like, girl, it ain't that deep. It really ain't that deep. I mean, she said that they talk shit about you. Okay, so the, how, the best way to nip that in the bud, call them over there saying, hey, Whitney just, well, Whitney and Heather just told me that, that, that Mary said that you guys talk shit about me. Is that true? Is that true? If they say no, they say no. Cool. We are gonna have to get to the bottom of this with Mary. Bam, bam, boom. But she flips the fuck out. And then, you know, when she flipped out, Lisa went to the side of talking to her. Now, speaking of Lisa, Lisa, um, why do you have to hate 
on, um, you know, Whitney's dance and talking about she's a center of attention. She wants to be a center of attention. It's a party. What do you do at a party? You dance. So then when Whitney and um, Whitney was talking to Heather and Meredith, Whitney spilled the beans to uh, Meredith about Jen, you know, talking shit about her marriage. And I don't blame Meredith for one from being ready to leave that fucking party because I would have been ready to leave too. I wish, you know, I will say I wish that um, Whitney had picked a better time to do this, but hey, no time like the present, right? So Jen is still just flipping out. I'm like, girl, you doing the most. And then you wonder why if, I mean, if these women said that they're afraid of you, this is why. Because you're a loose cannon. Now, me personally, if I was one of these women, I wouldn't be afraid of her. Jen is, like I tweeted, Jen is all barking, no bite. She's like a chihuahua. She's like a little chihuahua. She barks at you, but she won't do anything because the minute that you walk up on it, she gonna back up. You know, she gonna bark, you know, bark at you. But the minute that you step up to her, oh no, 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 oh no, they coming at me. That's Jen. But that is a Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. You guys, let me know what you guys think about the review. I mean, think about the episode. Leave your comments in the comment section. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell notification button, you guys. So you guys are aware of when I drop it again. Share this video. And also, you guys, do me a favor. Be sure to click down into the link of this video. Go over to my planner channel. Subscribe to the channel. And watch the videos that I do have. I have three up there currently. And I'm going to be doing a fourth one in, in the next day or so. It might be up Thursday. It might be up Thursday. It might be a Friday. I don't know. It actually might not be up on Thursday with me doing the week's hottest topics tomorrow. I'm also adding Growing Up Hip Hop Atlanta tomorrow, so it might be up on Friday. Damn, when is it going to be? It, it'll be up Friday. I guarantee you guys it'll be up Friday. But that is going to wrap it up for me over here. As always, you guys, and I really, I really got to say this one tonight. You guys do me a solid favor out there, really. Stay safe, you guys. That is the one thing that I ask of you guys. Stay safe, stay safe, stay safe in these streets. Wash your hands, you guys. Wear your mask and socially distance and we'll get through this all together. And once again, you guys, please, please, please stay safe. That's all I want. I want us all to be happy and healthy and safe. That's all I ask. Stay safe. That's the number one thing that I'm going to be saying for a while is to stay safe. And I'll see you guys later. Bye, guys.